Human papilloma virus infection is the most common sexually transmitted disease. More important than that, more than 97% of invasive carcinoma of cervix were directly related to human papilloma virus infection. Knowing about human papilloma virus and pathophysiology of human papilloma virus infection are very important in order to understand their behavior and clinical manifestation. This video clip is produced to provide a basic knowledge about human papilloma virus and how to recognize it existent clinically. In the last few slides of this presentation, we will also learn about how to manage the human papilloma virus infection. This is the basic structure of human papilloma virus or HPV. HPV is a very small virus with the diameter of 40 to 60 nanometer. HPV is a non-enveloped double-stranded circular DNA virus. This DNA is located within the shell or capsid, which is made up by 70 capsomeres. Each capsomere consists of five molecules. HPV is a stable virus. It's rarely undergoing mutation. HPV infections is transmitted through sexual contact and exclusively intraepithelial. The shell of human papilloma virus are mainly composed of capsid protein called VP1, stand for viral particle protein 1, and VP2, stand for viral particle protein 2. VP1 is also called major capsid protein, while VP2 is called minor capsid protein. VP1 is an epitope of the virus, meaning that it is the most important antigen responsible in triggering the host immune response. Antibody production toward VP1 is the basis of HPV vaccination. If we look at HPV DNA, the DNA is circular in shape. It divided into three main regions. Number one, early protein region called E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6, E7, and E8 gene. This region is actually a row of nucleic acid or gene, and each of these gene will encode specific protein, which has a specific function. For example, E1 gene encode E1 protein used for viral replication. E2 gene will control the E6 and E7 gene, while E6 and E7 gene is an oncogene. E6 and E7 will encode E6 and E7 protein, which are the oncoprotein. E6 and E7 oncoprotein are the proteins that are responsible in the malignant transformation of the infected cells. Second region is late protein region called L1 and L2 gene. L1 gene encode VP1 or major capsid protein while L2 gene encode VP2 or minor capsid protein. Third region is called long control region or LCR. Long control region has no coding potential. Now, based on the differences in the sequence of E6, E7 and L1 coding region, there are currently more than 200 types of human papilloma viruses. Human papilloma virus are divided into two groups. Number one, high-risk human papilloma virus, for example, human papilloma virus type 16, 18, 26, 31, 33, etc. And second group is low-risk human papilloma virus, for example, human papilloma virus type 6, 11, 40, 42, etc. High-risk human papilloma virus are oncogenic viruses associated with epithelial cancer such as cervical, vaginal, penile, and anal cancer. WHO has recognized HPV type 16 and 18 as carcinogenic agents for human, while low-risk HPV are associated with external anogenital warts. More than 90% of anogenital warts are due to low-risk human papilloma virus type 6 and 11. This slide shows a wide spectrum of disease related to human papilloma virus. 
bearing in mind that pre-invasive and invasive cervical cancer are only a small fraction from this huge spectrum of HPV-related diseases. HPV infection is a very common disease infecting the skin, genital, and non-genital mucosa. HPV is also implicated in smaller proportion of carcinoma of head, neck, and lung. What are the prevalence of HPV infection in Asia? HPV infection varies greatly across populations. This graph shows prevalence of HPV infection among general population in Asia based on HPV testing on cervical smear using PCR method. Result shows the age standardized prevalence of any HPV infection was 8.7%, while the prevalence of high-risk HPV infection was 5.4%. What are the mechanism of HPV transmission? There are two main mechanisms of how HPV being transmitted. Number one, sexual contact. And number two, non-sexual contact. HPV infection is acquired mainly by sexual contact through sexual intercourse, either genital-genital, manual genital, or oral genital contact. It may also be transmitted to virgin from non-penetrative sexual contact. HPV can also be transmitted through vertical transmission from mother to baby, causing respiratory papillomatosis. Some even believe that HPV could also be acquired through contact with formite, through undergarment, surgical glove, and biopsy forcep. But this is extremely rare. What are the factors associated with higher risk of HPV infection? In women, most common risk factors are young age, peak incidence among age 20 to 40, number of sex partners, and sexual behavior of male partner. While in men, male circumcision protects both male and female from HPV infection. Prevalence studies have shown that as high as 60% of students were found to have HPV infection two years after initiation of sexual activity. How to detect HPV infection? Before we go into how to detect HPV infection, we should understand the pathophysiology and stages of HPV infection. There are three stages of HPV infection. Stage 1 is called latent period. HPV enters the epithelium through microabrasion and resides into the epithelial cell without any intervention. In this latent phase, there will be no cytologic, histologic, and corposcopic evidence of the disease and the presence of HPV can only be detected through DNA testing. Second stage is called subclinical HPV infection. In subclinical stage, HPV started using epithelial cell for their replication, and this will lead to clinical appearance, but only through special tests and corposcopic magnification. The cervix looks normal on naked eye. And third stage is called clinical stage of HPV infection, where HPV disease is apparent even with gross inspection. We will learn how to recognize these stages in subsequent slides. How do we detect HPV infection? There are two types of HPV detection. Number one, direct detection of HPV virus, either detection of HPV DNA, or detection of oncoprotein E6 and E7. And number two, indirect detection either through microscopic or macroscopic examination. The latest handbook of gynecologic oncology for specialists and trainees is now available. Everything you need to know about gynecologic oncology is now available in this single handbook. This handbook contains 29 chapters in a total of 612 pages. This is the most informative guide to the prevention and management of gynecologic cancer, featuring the new FIGO staging 2009. The handbook comes with three DVDs, radical hysterectomy, radical vulvectomy, and basic colposcopy. Please visit our website, shown on the screen.